love to play in front of young kids. Um, so just to be able to play in front of all those kids, high school kids and, and people across the country, I mean, at any age, it's just a great feeling. There's going to be somebody in the band in your classes that you can go to, mm -hmm. and um, it gave you a touch base to feel, you know, I can put my back up against here and face the university because I've got 350 people behind me, which was a nice feeling. <laughs> It's a feeling of family. People take you in, no matter who you are, or what you play, or how you play. You're just some. You're always an individual. You're always someone. You're always important to us. The best thing I learned is that it doesn't matter what color you are, or what sex, or what age, or what ethnic group you belong to. As long as you march in step, play your notes, and kind of stay in the form, that's all that counts. And that's basically what life is about. We've been nicknamed the power and class of New England, and that's exactly what we are. We're the power and the class of this entire area of this campus, and it's the students themselves, their personalities, and what they bring to this organization that makes it what it is today. From the window of a Cessna, the area surrounding Amherst, Massachusetts is simply beautiful. The Connecticut River winds its way through acres of lush farmland. Tree-covered mountains rise up and almost touch the horizon, giving dimension and perspective to the Pioneer Valley below. And there in the center of this picturesque landscape sits the university. For more than a century, UMass has been a mecca for artists, philosophers, pundits, and musicians. By day, this campus gives life to new discoveries in math and science. By night, it is a beacon of hope and intellectual growth for Western Massachusetts and the nation. It is a place where young and old come together to learn how to better themselves so they can assist others. Central to the activities of this campus is an historic building, affectionately called Old Chapel. It is here that 300 young people come together to form the Minuteman Marching Band. They come from virtually every state in the nation to join hands with the legendary band director, George Parks, and one of the foremost percussion instructors, Tom Hannum. They arrive in August, eager to begin. They are enthusiastic about the friendships they will make and the performances they will give. But this year, the practices will be long and challenging. The standards will be very high as the band prepares for the National Bands of America competition. At the start, they learn the music and the routines. They participate in team building exercises and they have fun with the novelty of it all. When they end, they know that the music and the drills were not as important as the leadership and problem solving skills they learned. For this band has a tradition deeply rooted in the history of New England and aptly summarized by the inscription embroidered on the jackets the band members wear. They are the power and class of New England, and this is their story. A story of hopes and dreams, of obstacles overcome, of self-discovery and self-discipline, of teamwork and transformation. It is a story about building power and class in a generation of young people too often dismissed as Generation X. Hello, my name is Ann Trotman. I'm calling from the Minutemen Marching Band. How are you doing? Um, I'm you an are. ad staff right. person, and that means I work with the administrative staff at the UMass Band. And I was a summer recruiter this year, which means that I have to call people and bother people all summer long to uh, get them interested in joining the marching band because as long as I can get them coming to our band camp, Mr. Parks and everyone else from the marching band hooks them in and then they're here to stay. So I have to do the initial calls and things like that. 
it's a great playing opportunity. I mean, because if you've been doing it during high school, you found that you found your closest friends, and you hang out probably in the band room. And you're really close with your band director. That's a lot of how a lot of you know bands are like that. And here, even though you're coming to college, it's basically the same situation, you know, because it's a lot more people, and it's definitely a higher level of of musicianship. But it's a lot of fun, and the performances are incredible. We perform at every home game, and we're going to go to Indiana this year, and we're perform. Yeah, we're going to play at the Hoosier Dome. Yeah, this is the first time we've ever gotten a chance to do something like this, so. Once they get here, it's not a matter of how many hours you put in because all our rehearsal time is a lot of fun on top of being a lot of hard work. And for the most part, it's being out in the field and performing. And there's a certain amount of pride that goes along with that. It's something that you can't put into a phrase or a sentence. It's something that you feel. And once you've done it once, you're in to stay. Right. Have you heard of George Parks? Yeah, he, have you ever been to one of his drum major academy camps, or do you know anyone that has? Working for Mr. Parks has got to be the, one of the hardest things to do on the face of the earth because he demands excellence. He demands it from the marching band, he demands it from everyone that works from him. Certainly we want you to be musical, which you're going to have to practice. Ooh, that's a neat thing. You're, you're going to have to practice your parts. You've got to know them better than anyone else, and there can be no excuses at your end. Um, certainly um, classy, powerful, but I think for anything else to work, intense, awesome, enthusiastic, exciting, entertaining, and that's what the Minuteman Band is all about. you've got to make it real. Because when we see that, and that is the thing that this band has been better than anything else. Now, we are going to work our darndest to make them march and play and all that stuff real good. But the thing that this band can do more than anyone else is to grab that audience by the throat and say, you will love us whether you like it or not. And our audience will be there. Yeah, OK, I do. <laughs> no problem. Uh, it's just uh, like uh, nothing out of experience before. I, as far as marching bands go, uh, I just thought a marching band, but this this band is it's almost uh, indescribable. It, the performance is truly amazing. Huh? They they just perform to the audience, and they just show that they have a lot of power and a lot of class because they they just project themselves so well to the audience that I mean the audience can't help but think that they've got so much power and so much like uniqueness to them that power and class just has to be the main adjectives to describe the group. Uh, aren't they amazing? They have such dedication and, and they just sound great. I need an explosion for a couple of reasons. First of all, you need to wake up. You need to realize that the summer's over, and whatever it is that you were, you're not. And understand that we have the biggest challenge we've ever faced with this band. It is absolutely unbelievable. And so it's got to start now. And when we get these freshmen, we've got to right away get them cranked up. We've got to get them excited so they can go out in the heat, the sun, whatever it is, and experience whatever it is, and love every moment. Because we can't lose any of them. And they can't. Give me your eyes. Every single person that comes on this campus during band camp, their parents have given them to me, and they are my responsibility. Nothing will happen with these people 
that a mommy or a daddy would not want them to have happen. Make sense? Every parent wants to that close to children. And I have I just tons of every car happened to have But I know it's Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah. What's your name? Hi, Janice. Did you say you're Hi, Janice. Good. I know that's really a big thing. Hi, Janice. Uh, just so you know, the color Get block is leaving at 10 15. Yeah. So we yeah. outside the front door of the building. Well, you know, the first pulling up, of course, there it they you didn't see anybody. In fact, that's why we started to get out of the car to go in and see, you know, what the procedure was. And we didn't make it to the sidewalk before there was half a dozen kids around here helping and and uh, had the trunk unloaded before, you know, all of us were out of the car. When I was a freshman, you were just kind of thrown into the program, and and you. It was not a scary thing to be a freshman, but it wasn't necessarily the most positive thing. And uh, there were some experiences that, you know, you go through band camp and you, you look out for those seniors, and it was just not, for me, it was like, how can I be part of this group? And so I said, if I ever have the opportunity to change something, I will. And uh, a couple years ago, um, I had the opportunity at camp to work with the field staff, and we came up early to get ready for the band. and. And then uh, the, the freshmen were coming in. I said, why don't we go out and, and greet the freshmen and carry their suitcases up to the room, get to know them, and invite them into the program. And that has made the band go from uh, 180 to 300. And it's just been a really wonderful, positive thing that I see happen each year. Now, they, the suitcase thing is, is, is just the start of camp. It's the start of the family. It's, it's hi, how are you? Welcome. Please join us as opposed to, well, it's, it's nice of you to come. You know, it's, it's really, I think, made the, the band a more positive thing. I was always brought up to believe that band is a place for everybody, and that may have come from my high school band director or, or my elementary band director, I don't know, but it's something that George is really um, positive with and, and I think is a philosophy that is good, and it is a place for everybody, and I wish there was more place, you know, we wouldn't have half the crime. Well, is like band. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody should be in band. Because <laughs> you guys are all here because you're leaders. You're here because in some way or another, you're going to be a leader of the band. Let me tell you what the very first step of leadership is. And that, of course, is simply being the best band member that's out there. Okay? So, number one, of course, you show up early. Um, we need to make sure that without any question... Things start on time. So your first responsibility is to show up early. Your second responsibility is to know your music and know your drill. Heaven forbid that you're out there considering yourself the leader and, you know, you're like uh, spitting up all through the horn, you know? So make sure that you know your responsibilities. The third thing that you have to do as a leader is to show support and enthusiasm for the, you know, for the program. And there will be times again, that you may not feel like it. Frankly, there will be times that you may not even agree with what we're doing while we're doing it. And that is simply tough, because <laughs> that's where we are. The moment that you want to be a leader, you become an eagle, and eagles don't flock. You can be a goose. You can hang around with the rest of the world and be a goose, or you can be an eagle. We set ourselves apart, and the moment you set yourself apart, there are going to be there people trying to take pot shots. And that happens all the time. The thing is this, start fun. It is never too late to be what you might have become. It is never too late to be what you might have become. bus broke down and we were working with five buses that were full and we had to work with four buses so we had to run back and forth the yellow percussionists onto separate buses and get them down there. As the bus broke down, uh, actually we were about five minutes into the trip so we had a long trip ahead of us. You'll find that different people just come running off the buses and they'll help move equipment and move the people back and forth because we realize that we're on a time schedule. Everyone knows what our goals are and we all work to get them accomplished. So a lot of people ran off the buses and tried to help out the best they could.
We're only a band geek until they see the band. <laughs> <laughs> People, they say, oh, you're in the band, da da da, and then they go to the football game. I went to the football game, I saw the band, wow, you do that? And it's like, you know, so. It's like, because if someone says, oh, you're in the band, da da, I'm like, yeah, have you ever been to a game? And they'll be like, well, no. And then, like, one of their friends will be like, well, I've gone to the games, da 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 da, da you know, and so. We think the University of Massachusetts Minuteman Marching Band is just wonderful. The New England Patriots love to have them come in here and perform our half times. They are one of the best bands in the whole Northeast, and we absolutely love it when we can fit our schedule with theirs so that they can come in here and perform for us. Can we be this way in November? It's easy to be this way right now. <laughs> Where are you going to be in November? And you know what? I need to make sure that you are the best band members out there. That's what we have to stand for. We have to stand for good performance. We have to stand for excellence. We have to stand for those things before anything else. Because this program stands for things that are right. And, and you need to know that I'm in a real strange mood as I start this one, OK? Um, I'm not in a mood to fool around on some things. So understand. And you know, I, I, I really wish, I wish we had 40 trumpets. We have 32. Those 32 are going to play and could be good. Actually, we have 31. Okay. I wish we had 16 tubas. We have 10. You know. So you know, at this point, I don't care if we have eight. I don't care if I go to 24 trumpets. One of the best band I ever had was in '84. I don't care if I don't even have a flute section. And I know you guys will do what needs to be done, which is why I use you. But it could be anybody. I don't care because those who are going to be here are going to be the power and class of New England. This is my second year, the marching band. Uh, I've been following the band for about several years, six years. Uh, my sister was recruited here five or six years ago, and I was just overwhelmed with what was going on. I didn't know that they had such a big marching unit on the, in the Northeast, rather. And come to find out, I found out that Tom Hannum and Mr. Parks were here, and I knew this is the place that I wanted to be. When I was younger, my father, he, uh, he had left me when I was about eight, my sister. And I used to look for people to look up to. And the people that I found were my instructors. And I used them as role models. And I knew someday I wanted to be like them, like a Mr. Parks or Tom Hannum or people that I've been taught by in the past. And I always knew that was the kind of feeling I would want young, younger people to have towards me. So, and I get a great, you know, I, I love teaching. I get a great feeling out of seeing someone grow. Definitely, if not the best, certainly one of the best. Uh, and uh, yeah, he was recognized for doing that. He's, he's, a, he's a person who has a tremendous amount of ability because he worked at an early age. And I think at this point, Nick is uh, um, he's in a situation right now where there are different opportunities that are being presented to him that he could, if he 
he approaches it correctly, he could put himself in, in the position of being a leader in the area of the marching percussion field. Tom's had uh, the greatest impact in my life, probably more so than anyone. Yeah, he's very demanding. Um, as far as your rehearsal etiquette, you need to use the same approach every day. Consistency and commitment are two major factors. Um, a couple other rules that we follow are attitude, attendance, mental and physical ability. Um, he likes to follow those. He calls them the four A's. And he really does live by, live by that. Well, he has no um, favorites as far as when it comes to, when it comes to following his format, he'll stick right by it. He wanted our uniforms, Tom wanted our uniforms to be pressed. And I came Saturday at game time, my uniform wasn't pressed. And I tried to play a little trick. I tried to go downstairs to the uniform manager and grab a, an extra jacket. And I did. But it's like Tom knows. He, he came in the room and he saw me with my wrinkled jacket, my UMass jacket on the floor. And I had this nice brand new uniform jacket in my hand. And he asked me, uh, where'd you get that? I'm like, um, my uniform, uh, it doesn't fit me anymore. I needed to get a new one. And he's like, no, you're not marching. And right then I, you know, I knew there's no trying to, you know, change his mind. He's set. He's set with his rules and his thoughts. And I respect him a great deal for that. Honestly, I try to keep it simple for them. And, um, most of most of the, uh, I guess, motivation is by way of trying to make the kids accountable for what it is that they do. And through that accountability, uh, hopefully they, number one, accept the responsibility and pretty much learn how to think on their feet for themselves. Um, I believe that that's very important because in performance, that's really what you're, you're faced with. You, you need to be out there making, I guess, the right decisions. And ultimately, above and beyond just what they do in the marching band, um, I think that the way that the students in the percussion section are approached, we at least try to get them so that uh, what they're learning here sort of applies to other facets of their life. Obviously, their studies here at school, um, their family life, and uh, hopefully, eventually, their careers, whatever that may wind up being. I've grown a lot through Tom and working with him. And if there's anyone that I, that I would like to emulate, it'd be Tom Hannum. <laughs> experience has taught me to be responsible for myself. Um, it has taught me, um, has taught me a lot more about music. Um, it has taught me a lot about different sections of the band because I've been in three different sections. So I know more about the band overall than most people in the marching band. Um, it has taught me a lot about friendship because um, I have a lot of very close friends there. Um, and it's taught me that it's, it's taught me that I can do a lot more in one weekend than I thought, and I can still live through it. Being a leader is doing the uncomfortable thing. Being a leader is doing the thing that is not necessarily what you'd like to do most. I like being looked at as just a person that can play and can sing and can mostly stay in her spot at the right time and the right moment. I, you have to give me that few percentage points where I don't. Um, 
and in a way, I can't say it's unrealistic, but I wish it could be like that all the time. I'm, I mean, I've spent my whole life being judged, obviously, because first of all, I'm a woman, second of all, I'm African American. And when I'm in band, I'm just judged based on what I do and how I do it, and that's the way it should be. And I, I, can't, I can't say enough how much I wish that could just, it could just be like that all the time for me. What this band has always stood up for more than anything else is the people in the band. The strength of this band is you and you and you and you and you and you. You know, I mean, that's what the band is. But some of you who have been around it for a while know that at times the strength of you is the band, is the whole thing. And it is not until you are willing to give up yourself and willing to give up some of those individual kinds of things. It is not until you're willing to do that that all of a sudden the whole thing clicks and the chills start happening. If you just do your work and if you're a good person on the inside, and it doesn't matter what's on the outside, then you're a good person. And I wish more people would understand that. And a lot of, a lot of the African American community doesn't understand why I do this. And I do it because I love to perform. And I don't, that's just the way I am. I love to perform. And I don't care who I hang out with. It doesn't matter. It depends on who the person is on the inside. We have people out in the world that, that actually have, have, have realized that this is not just about band. So, I like this. The essential condition of everything you do must be choice, love, and passion. And actually, that's the band. The first thing you have to do is choose to do it. I think the larger issue that Mr. Parks is trying to get across is that, well, yeah, we all have to work together, no matter what. And we have to learn to work together, or else it's not going to work at all. The whole organization is going to fall apart. a lot of money just to move people around, um, move six buses in and out of a city, 600, uh, 300 people in uniform, and it just, I don't deal with all of it, but th what I see, it's, it's a lot of money. And uh, yeah, so the fundraising is very important to us. One critical aspect of the marching band program, of course, is the band camp, which operates before uh, school opens. And I think that used to cost something like $9,000 to uh, house and feed these uh, 300 students for uh, the amount of time they're in band camp. Uh, the charges for that over the last five years have been, uh, have risen to uh, over $36,000, just for an example. So by the time that, um, when you look at that $100,000 budget, and then you start subtracting things like band camp and the travel, the, the buses and so forth to get to the games, uh, there's really hardly anything left. And the students do sleep on gym floors and they eat at McDonald's. Uh, uh, it's a very uh, bare bones operation uh, in, one, in one hand. On the other hand, when you look at the totals that are involved, uh, there is a considerable expense. I don't think that a lot of people in the university have any idea what it costs to move such a large unit. Um, an average away game just for the day involves six buses, a truck, lunch, and dinner, feeding all those people and moving all those people. 
turns out to be thousands and thousands of dollars just for one day. You know, anytime you feed a band like this, it's going to cost you $1,000. Um, you're talking 250 to 300 people, and 300 times $3, you know, the old $3 maximum at McDonald's, which doesn't buy as much as it used to, and uh, there's $900 right there. So if indeed you ever wanted to give them a big meal, you know, that of course would cost a whole lot more. And two things have happened that, has, that have kept us in the ballgame. The band members have started their own fundraising campaigns. We, you know, we sell magazines, and they've sold from you know twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars worth of magazines to to raise money. And in addition, people who like the band and alumni and that sort of thing have sent in money. So, on our own, we've been able to come up with about twenty-five percent of the budget over the past few years to to maintain the program and, and to keep it going. George Parks agreed, somewhat in somewhat puzzled uh, initial reaction, but agreed to be the chair of this year's uh, Comac campaign. And I can say that already he's made a unique contribution, and uh, he's spoken at uh, the community breakfast and at the Hampshire County United Way kickoff <coughs> breakfast. And he's, in case you aren't, well, we all know the band. You can tell he's a man with a message. And I'm delighted to introduce him today. Thanks, George. Puzzled is not really the word for it. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how it is that I got here. And uh, uh, first of all, I don't do speeches. And so I, you know, I apologize to anybody who likes speeches. I'm, I'm just pretty weird. I, I, I think it's probably um, all those late seasons um, when like it's November and it's snowing and I'm still out there trouncing around and climbing towers and things. Um, I want to begin with a little story. And this is the story about four people named everybody, anybody, somebody, and nobody. Uh, there was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could have done it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. And it... It's, it's so obvious that what we've got to do beyond anything else is simply get everybody to do what everybody can do. And it doesn't, as you know, it doesn't take a lot. Um, it simply takes participation. And, and I mean, that's what life is. Life is participation. It is not a spectator sport. We cannot take timeouts. We cannot sit on the sidelines. We cannot watch. Every single moment that we get the opportunity to exist is our own little Super Bowl. And so we have to get in there and, and play completely. Uh, you see, I like to see people working together. I mean, I, I, I really like lots of people. That's, I'm kind of crazy about that. And tomorrow is going to be like the, the full event of that. Uh, we have 47 bands coming in, and we're going to have a band of 3,000 at the football game tomorrow. And uh, we're putting it all together. I just like to see lots of people trying to work together. Uh, come on down, you know, about 9 o'clock in the morning, and you'll see some chaos like you wouldn't believe. Band Day was an absolutely amazing day for me. I, it's, it's one of those days like come time where they have no idea if I can really get through it. You know, we, we have the plan set, but to think about bringing 3,000 kids together and to be able to capture them, to have them experience what this band experiences, and it's taken me several weeks. And within one hour, I've got to get them to respond, to understand that they've got to respond to me, and they've got to respond to our kids, and they've got to be able to give us the kind of energy and emotion that our band has to do. It's very challenging to do that so quickly. This was possibly the best one. together, which was, was some, a really big feeling of accomplishment, something that I didn't think I was going to be able to do. You never think, you always see somebody else do it, and you never think 
you could do it. And when you're finally put up to do it, just by working in the past with the things you've done, you just realize that, yes, you can do it, and you have done it. Um, besides that, it's just, it was incredible to be playing with so many high school students because they get so much out of you. Like, they look up to you so much, and they get so much out of playing with you. It's, for them, it's just, it's more than just music. It's just the fact that you've taken them under your wing and you've shown them something. You made them feel important, that what they do is important. Because in high school, a lot of times, there's a misconception that marching bands, you're a geek, or it isn't cool to be in a marching band. But when you come to college, it's different. Because you work hard, and we, we've made a name for ourselves in this university. And people in, within the university respect us. So we've taught, taken that and taught the kids that no matter what they do or what people say, they always have to have pride in what they do and who they are because they are important and that's what they get from it. And that's a really good feeling of being able to transmit that to them and making them feel part of, of the band of UMass. Programs in music and uh, leadership development are essential, essential to the development of young kids, essential to the development of high schoolers, and especially to the development of adults. You know, at this stage of the game, we're, we're supposed to be adults. You know, we're on that line. And this band gives us there were men in trucks. the chance to have fun, but yet to develop so many essential skills. When I leave, I dealing with people, uh, keeping that positive outlook and that smile on my face no matter what, whether you know it's the worst day I ever had. It, it's the most important thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Yeah. I'm here because my daughter Heather is a student here at the University of Massachusetts and I've only seen her three times this year, this being the third time and um, I don't get an opportunity to see her that often and this is my birthday this weekend and I decided that I would come over and spend the day with Heather. I think that this has probably been one of the greatest experiences of her life. Um, she has, she has uh, developed a tremendous uh, group of friends. Um, it's a little bit about music. Um, it's, although it appears to be a lot about music, it's really only a very little bit about music. It's, this is an experience. Yes, it's a band, but it's an experience. Um, 300 students out there totally committed to what they're doing. Um, it's more than a band. It's about family, and it's about friends, and it's about, it's about developing loving relationships that, uh, that maybe you won't carry with you for the rest of, the, of your life, but um, in a physical way, but spiritually and emotionally, I think you carry the thoughts and the memories of those people with you throughout, throughout your life. That I hope that there will always be funding for this organization. Um, having having s b nurtured two children in music programs, there's always that threat in school districts of, of you know, we're going to, you know, we're, we got to drop something here, and so, you know, let's hit the sports and the music. Um, I think as time goes on, we will learn that it's the sports and the music and the extracurricular things that our, that our children do that are really the most um, important learning experiences of their lives. I am uh, very, very happy to be here tonight. I uh, didn't think that I would ever be at a gathering like this again last February. As you know, I was stricken pretty severely with paralysis. My love of music, my family, especially my wife, and my students. The power of their love and their caring lifted me from the bed. Walter Chestnut is our, uh, our trumpet professor, and he's uh, just a god to, <laughs> to all the trumpet players. And I've seen him work with the trumpets, and he's, he's wonderful, and very, very, funny man, very nice, very pleasant man, uh, who's an excellent trumpet player. He's been doing fanfares at the uh, at concerts for a while. I've been a very active uh, musician, uh, conductor and player for a long time. And I've been probably do about 125 services a year, concerts and clinics and artists and residences. And on February 19th of this, uh, this year, 
Um, I awoke at 4 o'clock in the morning with a severe pain in my chest and uh, sat up in bed very quickly and my right arm was uh, completely numb and I, I thought I'd had a heart attack but I kind of quickly realized that usually it's your left arm that bothers you. And uh, I went, uh, woke my wife and we went to the hospital and uh, by the end of the day I was transferred in the middle of the day to another hospital and then by the end of the day uh, they operated me off on me for a uh, C4 and 5 disc that disintegrated and went into my spine. And by the end of that day, that Friday the 19th of February, I was completely paralyzed. I couldn't move anything. They operated that night, and the next morning, uh, the prognosis was that they didn't know if I'd ever walk again or ever be able to move again. And uh, that's when Walter Chestnut, I guess, if I have an inner strength, I love doing what I love to do too much to not do it. So the first thing that I said when I awoke in the morning was, how do I get better? And since that moment, I've been striving to do everything I could to get better and not ever dwelling on what happened to me, but what's down the road. Walter and, Chestnut uh, is, is an unbelievable man. He's, he's so caring. The first thing, that, first thing he cares about most is, well, I'm sure it's his family, but you, he loves his students to death. I mean. I've been studying with him for six years now, ever since the fall of 1988, and I've learned so much. My playing has improved, but more than that, I mean, my character and my pers personality, everything has improved about me, and a lot of it's due to him. Not only with teaching me the music, but teaching me how to be a better person and how to teach. That's very important. That's what my hands a lot of were hit very severely. They're still not back, but my feet are coming back really terrific. And they said that they didn't think I'd ever walk. Well, I'm walking, and I will conduct again because my arms, my arms are mu moving and, and maybe even almost moving musically so that perhaps someday I will be able to get on a podium and do an all-state again, which I love more than anything in the world. So that's, uh, that's my goal is to try to get everything working uh, normally again. I've learned just so much so much from him. There's times you come in, he can tell when you have a problem, something wrong with the teacher, with classes. He'll sit there and talk the whole lesson, and you just feel so good when you leave. He's so caring. So, and, um, you know, he just... I'm a pretty lucky guy, and my students have been so helpful. They are, they're just incredible. And my friend George, who uh, gave me a chance to get up, and I even came to band camp and worked with the trumpets, which I thought was a dream that I'd never see again. So just being able to get up and make music and be with people was... Uh, Pretty exciting for me. Riding my motorcycle to class last Wednesday morning when a woman pulled directly across my line of traffic heading into a parking lot and uh, we collided. My wrists were, both wrists were broken on impact. I was thrown from the motorcycle but for some reason was otherwise uninjured. Um, that's the good news. The bad news, of course, is that I, I'm, I can't play right now. These pins go into my bones and are sort of in lieu of a cast. They hold them together and hopefully they allow them to heal in six weeks or less. I don't know when my wrists are ready, but I'm ready to have them off. <laughs> yeah, well, we're getting there. Um, I believe we're about three and a half weeks today. Because we did this on a uh, on a Thursday, didn't we, Brian? Thursday, thirtieth, uh, I guess. Yeah, and we'll be. I think we'll be. A, we'll be a month this Thursday. Uh, right now, I'm quite worried. The uh, right wrist was broken fairly badly. They wouldn't promise me that the fingers would work at all. They actually do, and I'm very thankful for that. But we won't find out what the wrist can do until after the pins come out. Um, and as a percussion major, that worries me very much. Um. I really think um, he's quite determined. I was very surprised to see him in uniform Saturday as kind of part of the full band there. I didn't know that um, he jumped back into things so quickly. Um, and as I told Brian, actually most of the hard work um, from here on in um, is for he and his um, therapist and um, will really begin once this stuff comes off. Um, that's the point at which He'll really need to begin to work to, to get his range of motion and his strength back in his wrist. It's hard to say if I, I sort of am modeling myself after a certain role model, but I definitely have acquired 
from this organization a certain ethic that that I can overcome. Um, and I also have in this organization specific goals in mind for which I'd like to be able to do. Uh, for instance, the Indiana performance. Um, it's sort of the highlight of this season. The pins may come out of my arms that week. Uh, obviously, I won't be playing all my old parts <laughs> during the first week. But I do have as a goal being able to keep playing um, and perhaps playing in that performance. Uh, this is one time I was actually on time for the trip because um, being a bus parent, I had to get lists and stuff. And everyone was just really excited. We left at 11 o'clock at night and we got there at 6 o'clock the following evening. We stopped at Ohio. At Western High School, we just jumped off the bus. We did a quick little warm up, just a physical warm up, not even a musical warm up. And, and then we performed for them. And, um, it, it, it was really good. I, I, you know, they liked it and stuff. So. Few of the bands will have the kind of sounds that we do. Few of them. There will be some. Most of the bands automatically will have more style. But you're smarter. So you go, because you're a little older. You've been in a bus a while? As a group, together, that was the best you performed the first show this season. And I've seen it a lot. And that Color Guard is the, uh, the visual aspect to a marching band uh, that goes along with the drill, the marching part of the band. And the Color Guard takes the music that's being played and brings it to life in color, in movement, and in uh, personality. And this year was, uh, without a doubt, the most polished color guard that anyone else has ever seen. OK, now, we've got tomorrow morning. We've got to make sure that the block, you know, we know what that block looks like and when the line. We've got to make sure that all the horn angles are correct. Um, Bill Bailey, most of that's where you know, there's just lots of little things. I, I didn't know we'd ever be able to do this pan thing. I didn't know we'd be able to do that. And right now, oh, that's so close. There are a couple of things that aren't. By the way, like if you're in doubt about the temp, uh, tempo, think slower. All of you, everybody, you know, like you and people stand here and stuff, okay? If, if you're down about the tempo, think slower because it has a tendency to rush there. And, and you guys get a little bit uh, crazy and you start picking up tempo and slow so like that. But the moment is just so gorgeous. I said early in the semester that I said, you know, the whole season for me is going to boil down to how you do that too. Because I want a band that's going to be there tomorrow. I want them to say, wow, that group is musical. That group plays more musically than any college band I've ever heard. And we're, we're Again, before we go out there, just because, like, I can, I just want to uh, experience the pan one. So here we go. Detail the ready? Detail! You guys got up to a lot, Henry's on his way. Detail, hunt, ten, hunt, points, hunt, pan, one, ready, and.
high school band. I always had those times where I kind of wished that I had a band like that would really work and really care and a group of people that really wanted to be together and all that sort of stuff. And that's you. You are my dream. This will be one of the most memorable experiences of your life. Make the most of it. Have some fun. Go crazy. Think. Don't play too loud. But have a ball. Band is fun and band is good times. Um, and band is um, friends that you'll have forever, you know. I hope, anyways. It's just a great organization to be in. We clock in the dome! It's just too bad that it has to end. <laughs> I've reached the office of the UMass Minuteman Band. Sorry that I cannot get to the phone right now, but please leave a detailed message. I'll get back to you as soon as possible.